the Hegelian dialectic. I'm going to give you an overview of what this principle is, how it's being used to replace true biblical Christianity with the counterfeit of today, driving the populace towards the plan of the Antichrist, one world religion, and one world government. And even if you understand this principle or are familiar with it, I'm going to have details that you very likely do not know. It's going to be foundational to multiple videos that I have upcoming that are going to be released. So if you're not subscribed, please make sure you are. You don't want to miss what's coming up. So let's get right to it. The Hegelian dialectic. The Hegelian dialectic is where the ruling elite create a problem anticipating in advance the reaction of the population to the crisis and thus conditioning the people to call for change. When the population is properly conditioned the desired agenda of the ruling elite is presented as the solution. The solution they present is not intended to solve the problem but to serve as the basis for a new problem or exacerbate the existing one. When the newly created problem reaches boiling point, it becomes the foundation for the people to clamor for change again. This process is repeated over and over, all the time moving society towards whatever end point they have in mind. Called Problem Reaction Solution, a.k.a. Thesis Antithesis Synthesis. So in government... How the problem reaction solution paradigm works. The government creates or exploits a problem, then attributes blame to others. The populace reacts by asking the government for protection and help to solve the problem. The government offers the solution that was planned by them long before the crisis occurred. Outcome, rights, and liberties are exchanged for the illusion of protection and help. Now again I'm going to get into specifically how this affects Christians, Bible believers, very important, but a perfect example the governmental outworkings 9-11. Now even if you still believe that Muhammad and Abdul and their gang of box cutters took down steel skyscrapers with hijacked planes this is the smoking gun. You probably don't know about this or didn't really look into it with Building 7. Building 7, again, as I call the smoking gun. No plane hit Building 7. No plane hit this one. And yet this one crumbled demolition style like the others, being hit by nothing but, as they said, debris. Some debris from other buildings hit it, caused a fire, and it crumbled demolition style. Hmm, sure. So this compares one of these buildings collapse. Can you guess which one? Well, I just told you. Here's building seven. You can see little traces of fire here. And then you have, for example, the Windsor building fire engulfed in flames and it did not crumble demolition style. It didn't crumble, didn't fall down. Beijing Mandarin Oriental Hotel fire, again, engulfed in flames. These buildings didn't come down. It's not how physics works. And so what we ended up with, after so much of the populace bought their little setup there with Abdul and Muhammad, we have to protect the homeland. So we had the Patriot Act, protecting the homeland. And I'm not going to get into all of the details. I'm sure you know how the nanny state and surveillance state has grown so much since then. And it's all for your protection. Makes sense, right? Now here is old George Wilhelm Hegel himself and how he explains the synthetic solution to these conflicts can't be introduced unless those being manipulated take a side that will advance the predetermined agenda. 
So this is Hegel. This is where it's attributed to. It's really related to many godless enlightenment, quote-unquote, philosophers of past ages. And so he's just famously attributed, uh, it's famously attributed to him. But the point here, you see the synthetic solution. Remember, thesis, antithesis. And this chart here shows by different terminology how it works in this overall ideological sort of just way of thinking. So you have the, this general way of thinking they present, and now I'm going to get into the Christianity and religious aspect of this. So you have the thesis they have this way of thinking they present, and then the antithesis or antithesis, opposite ideology, reactionary way of thinking. And then, so you have this conflict between ways of thinking. Then you have the synthesis or compromise. See, shift in position, so they end up with this, this compromise position. So you could have true biblical Christianity, pure and undefiled religion, as the Bible calls it, well, that's too restrictive. So you end up with these opposing ideas, and then you end up with compromise. Did you know that we have an office in this sort of protection and surveillance new paradigm that we're living in these days that polices the world for international religious freedom. You can stay connected with them, too, on Twitter. So the Office of International Religious Freedom has the mission of promoting religious freedom as a core objective of U.S. foreign policy. The office is headed by the ambassador at large for international religious freedom, Samuel Brownbeck, we monitor religious persecution and what? Oh, ho, ho, ho. there's the hot button term, isn't it? Discrimination. Keep paying attention to where this is going. Persecution and discrimination worldwide recommend and implement policies in respective regions or countries and develop programs to promote religious freedom. See, it's all about freedom. That's what it's about, right? freedom, religious freedom. So given the U.S. commitment to religious freedom and to the international covenants that guarantee it as the inalienable right of every human being, the United States seeks to promote freedom of religion and conscience throughout the world as a fundamental human right and as, as a source of stability for all countries. It's all about freedom and stability, see? Assist emerging democracies in implementing freedom of religion and conscience, and assist religious and human rights, NGOs, those are non-governmental organizations, in promoting religious freedom. Identify and denounce regimes that are severe persecutors on the basis of religious belief. Now, see any hot button terms in here? How about human rights? What are we always hearing associated with human rights? Non-governmental organizations, NGOs, human rights. How about these? Ah, there it is. The Human Rights Campaign. An outright Action International, formerly known as the International Gay and Lesbian Human Rights Commission. So you see how this part of the plan works? These people who are all about your religious freedoms represent their counter way of thinking. And this is the truth now. Presented by them, the truth is this is real Christianity. This is freedom of religion. And you can't be against it. You better not be against it. You think this isn't targeting Christians? Maybe you didn't see this. 
This happened in 2013. Made quite a splash when it did. Defense Department classifies Catholics, evangelicals, as extremists. That's right, the Defense Department came under fire Thursday. This was published Friday, April 5th, 2013. For a U.S. Army Reserve presentation that classified Catholics and evangelical Protestants as extremist religious groups alongside Al-Qaeda and the Ku Klux Klan. So you'll hear this possibility of being a homegrown terrorist. That's right. Terrorists, terrorists, and terrorists. Because if you do not believe and accept the agenda of Sodom and Gomorrah as it is today that are compassionate and tolerant human rights if you oppose homosexual churches which say men and women can be married to the same sex and gender is fluid and whatever you identify with and all are welcome in other words if you believe what is written in this book then this will become a terrorist manifesto a terrorist handbook so what do we do as I've said many times we continue to look at the word of Almighty God because he has the victory we have the victory in him and what we need to do is do what his word says we need to continue to preach the truth we need to stand on his word and don't let anybody tell you at any time that this is a terrorist handbook this is the word of God stand upon it don't be moved Preach the truth. Do what it says to do. We have a responsibility in the face of evil to withstand in the evil day. And as I said, keep your eyes out for forthcoming videos that will explain not only what's going on, but what we can do about it. If we just stand idly by, Satan has a free hand to take down millions of people at his will. And we can do something about it. The Bible says the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. So, till next time, continue to preach the word, instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time shall come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And that's the time that we're in now today. But continue to stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. To him be all the glory. Amen.